Welcome to a fee way excellence without stress. Hi guys, we are back again. It's me, Miss Stella, your favorite physics tutorial. And today we're going to take another very interesting topic in physics, which is simple machines. Simple machines. And you are going to really enjoy the class. You are really going to enjoy the class. And before we start, I want to just bring, put, give a short introduction into simple machines so you can understand what simple machines are. You can understand what simple machines are. So simple machines make work easy. These machines have one of very few moving parts. Simple machines work by changing the direction or amount of force. So you are going to see different simple machines now. Different simple machines. This is the lever. The lever rests on the fulcrum and it is used to lift or move loads. It's used to move, lift or move load. That's the lever. Then we have the wheel and axle. The wheel and axle is a simple tool that makes work easier. And we have the pulley. The pulley is a tool with a wheel and a rope. It is used to lift or move loads. Then we have the wedge. The wedge also is a tool that narrows a thin edge. And is an axe. Is a, an axe is an example. We have the screw. Screw are simple tools with edges around a pole. So that's a tool. A pole. Then inclined plane is a tool with flat surface, and it is used for. And that's that's all about the simple machines. So, simple machines. Simple machine is a device used for performing work by applying force, effort at a convenient point in a convenient direction to overcome friction or load at some point. So that's a simple machine. You don't, it's just like you want to lift something. The, the amount of force needed to lift that force is 100 Newton. Using a simple machine should reduce the amount of force you are going to uh, um, apply. So the force you are applying is called your effort. The force you are applying is called your effort. So simple machine is a device used for performing work by applying force at a convenient point in a convenient direction to overcome the friction at some other point. Simple machines help to reduce human effort. Yes, that's it. That's it. You, like, for example, your wheelbarrow, you want to carry load, something you're supposed to carry and you'll be very tired. When you use your wheelbarrow, the wheelbarrow will reduce your work. So simple machines. Examples include the inclined plane, wheel and axle, which, which we showed in the previous slide, pulley, screw, wedge, and lever. We must take care of machines to minimize their wear and tear by keeping them away from dust and moisture, lubricating them, painting iron parts of the machines. Then we have what is called the mechanical advantage. What is mechanical advantage? It's just the ratio of the load to the effort. It's just telling you that, okay, this is the load you want to carry, and this is the effort you want to apply. So the mechanical advantage is what? The ratio of the load to the effort. The ratio of the load to the effort. It has no unit because both of them, load is in Newton, effort is also in Newton. It is expressed as MA is equal to load over effort. Load is the output force, while um, effort is the input, what you put inside. It's also known as force ratio. It's also known as force ratio. So mechanical advantage is the ratio of the load to the effort. Like advantage of using a machine advantage of using a machine so it's the load divided by what by effort velocity ratio is the ratio of the distance you can see from this picture velocity ratio is the ratio of the distance moved by effort divided by distance moved by load so look at his efforts now yeah and look at the load that is velocity ratio the velocity ratio how um consistent the machine is working effort Distance moved by effort divided by distance moved by load. So velocity ratio, the ratio of the distance moved by the point at which the effort is applied. This is the point the effort is applied in a simple machine to distance moved by point at which the load is applied. In the same time, in the same case, an ideal and in an ideal and that is an ideal case. In a case of an ideal frictionless and weightless machine, velocity ratio is equal to mechanical advantage. So in the case of an ideal, that is a frictionless and weightless machine, velocity ratio is equal to the mechanical advantage. Velocity ratio is sometimes called the distance ratio. Distance of what the point of effort and the load. That is velocity. So distance moved by effort divided by distance moved by load. Remember that the other one was load over effort. So look at the distance moved by effort was 30 the distance moved by load was what 10 and we had what three ratio one three ratio one 
also does not have units. Then what is efficiency? The efficiency of a machine is the ratio of the work done on the load by the machine to the work done on the machine by effort. Thus, it is the ratio of useful work done by the machine output to the work done by the machine what input. So it's the ratio of two similar quantities and it has no unit. It's, it's in the actual machine, there is always some loss of energy due to friction and weight of moving parts. Thus, the output energy is always less than the input energy. Thus, the output energy is always less than the input energy. Therefore, no machine is 100% efficient. So why is no machine 100% efficient? Because the output energy is always less than what's the input energy because of what? Due to the loss of energy. Efficiency is output energy divided by the input energy. You can also call it mechanical advantage over the velocity ratio velocity don't forget your mechanical advantage is load over effort while velocity ratio is the distance moved by effort divided by the distance moved by what load so all of those should be on our head let's go to our board to write some things so we've already said that our ma we have that our MA, which is the mechanical advantage, is what? Load over what? Effort or output, output force divided by the input force. Why velocity ratio is distance moved by effort, distance of effort divided by distance moved by load. Then we have our MA. MA is, equal, uh, sorry, efficiency. Of a machine is MA divided by VR times 100 over 1. MA divided by VR times 100 over 1. So look at this now. What we can represent this as capital L over capital E. And we can represent this as small l over small what? Small e. The distance of it. Small l over small e. And we can put this into this because if L is as if I'm saying L over e divided by small l over small e so this can also be l over e times e over l so l times e over e times the small l that is load times distance moved by effort divided by effort times distance moved by load will give us your ma divided by vr times 100 over 1 for the efficiency of a machine so that is what we are saying now. So don't forget, this, an example is given here. A machine displaces a load of 125 kg F through a distance of this, while an effort of this acts through the distance of this. So you see that now. This is the effort and the distance of the effort. This is the load and the distance of the load, right? So calculate the efficiency. And this is so simple. We already know what. We can get our uh, MA, we can get our VR. Because our MA is what? Load over effort. Is that not so? So MA is load 125 kg. Load arm is 130, 1.30 meter. Effort is equal to 125 kg and effort arm is 4.0 watt meter. So can we get our velocity ratio? Yes. Velocity ratio is just the F distance moved by effort divided by distance moved by load, which was what? 0 0.30 divided by what? Divided by the four points. Where is it? Okay. 0 0.30 divided by no effort zone is... Okay. Wait, while an effort... Okay. 4.0 divided by what? 0 0.30 divided by 0 0.30 meter and it will give us our what? It's going to give us our velocity ratio. Then what is the mechanical advantage? Mechanical advantage is load, 125, divided by effort, which is 12.5. And we have our mechanical advantage. Then what is our efficiency? MA over VR divided times 100 over 1. And that is equals, what, is, what was our MA? Our MA was what? 10. What is our VR? 13.33 times 100. And we have the efficiency. So this machine is 75% efficient. It's 75% efficient. Types of simple machines, we've showed that in the previous slide. We have the lever. A lever is a simple machine. It consists of a rigid rod, which is capable of turning around a pivot or a support. It is also called a fulcrum. A lever is a simple machine. It consists of a rigid rod, which is capable of turning around a pivot or a support. It is also called a fulcrum. There are three types of lever according to the position of the applied force, the load and the fulcrum. So here we have the fulcrum. 
we have the effort arm and we have the what the load arm here is the effort and this is the fulcrum where the fulcrum is situated between the load arm and the effort arm we call it a lever of the first order let's take that again when the fulcrum is situated you know this is as if it's a balance point like when we're doing moment of a force so when the fulcrum is situated between the load and the effort we call it what a lever of the first order a lever of the first order. for example a beam balance a crowbar or a seesaw you know a seesaw right so this is what is called what lever of the first order lever of the first order Lever of second order. When the fulcrum and the effort are situated at two opposite ends, the fulcrum and the what? When the fulcrum and the effort are situated at two opposite ends, sorry, at two opposite ends of the lever and the load is placed in between them, we call it what? Lever of a second order. So look at this. Lever of second order. When the fulcrum and the effort, the fulcrum and the effort, we can see the fulcrum. This is the fulcrum, right? And this is the effort. When the fulcrum and effort are situated at the opposite ends, look at this fulcrum here. You can see the effort at the end. When they are situated at the opposite ends of the lever and the load is placed between them. You know, the first one was the fulcrum was between the two of them. But now the fulcrum. And the efforts are at both ends and the load is placed between them we call it a lever of the second order for example a nutcracker or a what a wheelbarrow you remember that this is where you're going to apply your force if you are using your wheelbarrow so this is it now so when the fulcrum and the effort is placed what opposite side of the load we call it the lever of the second order then the lever of the third order when the fulcrum and the load is situated at the opposite end. So this is the fulcrum and the load. Then the effort is between them. We call it the lever of the third order. So when the fulcrum and the load is situated at the opposite end of the lever and an effort is applied somewhere between them, we call it the lever of the third order. For example, a pair of tongs or a fishing rod. Then we go to another machine, a pulley. A pulley is a simple machine. I, we showed you pulley in the previous slide. A pulley is a simple machine. It has wheel and a groove on its rim. A pulley system is used for lifting heavy loads easily. It is a mechanical device that reduces the effort to lift the heavy object or material with the help of a rope and wheel. It's known as the pulley. In the general arrangement, a pulley is made up of rope or a cable wrapped around a wheel which is aged and fixed. There are three types of pulley, namely fixed pulley, movable pulleys and compound pulleys. Fixed pulleys are those pulleys that are attached to a single point as the name subject that this pulley is stationary and is fixed to a support like a wall or ceiling and the rope chain passes through it. These are vital mechanical devices and as they change the direction of the object which is very useful in in what in lifting every object very useful pulley system is used when some people use it in drawing water from the well so it's a very very good so move every pulleys are different types of pulleys as they move with the object and unlike fixed pulley they need little effort to lift the heavy object they multiply the efforts made on them the drawback of using this pulley is that they do not change the direction of the object then we have the compound pulleys compound pulleys are a combination of fixed pulleys and movable pulleys they have both qualities of the fixed and movable pulley they need little force to lift the heaviest object and they can change the direction of the objects being lifted so this is a pulley you can see that now this is a pulley these are the ropes these are the ropes used so this is a question now a block and a tackle system of pulley containing four pulleys four pulleys so anytime you hear the four pulleys it's talking about the what the velocity ratio it's talking about the velocity so the four pulleys is the velocity ratio so a block and tackle system of pulleys consisting of four pulleys is used to raise a load of 500 newton through a height of 20 meter. If the total work done against friction is in the pulley is equivalent to 800 joules, calculate the total work done by the effort, the efficiency of the system, and the effort applied. The effort applied. So don't forget this one can only be gotten from efficiency is equal to um, sorry, mechanical advantage is equal to load over effort. So let's proceed now. So the total work done is equal to work done in raising the load plus work done against the friction. Work done in raising the load plus work done in against friction. Don't forget that we have what the distance that is moving is 20 meter. The distance it's moving is 20 meter. And we have they said a block and tackle system of pulley consisting of fourth pulley is used to raise a load of 500 newton through a height of what of 20 meter. So it has to be going 20 meter, and we have four pulleys. So 500 times 20 meter 
is the what is the load then plus the what friction because if the total work done against friction in the pulley is equivalent to 800 what is the total work what is the total work done don't forget that work done is force times distance so for us to get the work done for this is what work times distance with this one we change it to joules and this one too is also in joules which is 800 which is 800 so let's go so we have that the work, total work done is what work done in raising the load plus work done against friction work done in raising the load is force times distance force of 500 right newton then what distance was it going through 20 and that is 500 times 20 plus 800 that's this plus this will give us the total work done the total work. then efficiency don't forget work output divided by what work input times 100 over one work output divided by work input times 100 over one so what was the work output the work output was what the load you know load is output while effort is the input so that is 50 times 20 what is the work input is the what total work done the total work done by the machine is what 10,800 then times 100 over 1 don't forget work output divided by work input times 100 over 1 work output divided by work input times 100 over 1 your work output is this which is 50 times 20 your work input is this which is what 10,800 then times 100 which will give us the 9 to 2.6 percent so that is f so let's take this again let's take the question again a block and tackle system of pulley consisting of four pulleys is used to raise a load a question and this is a pulley is an example of a pulley we have the tension that is the force in the rope we have the effort we have the load and these are the pulleys so a block and tackle system of pulleys consisting of four pulleys is used to raise a load of 500 newton that is raising a load through a height of 20 meter if the total work done against friction in the pulley is equivalent to 800 joules calculate the total work done by the effort two the efficiency of the system and three the total the effort applied don't forget that work times distance and uh, work done is equal to force times distance is equal to force times distance. so let's go to the next slide solution the total work done is the work done erasing the load yes and what work it was done erasing the load the, the the efforts multiplied by the distance that it is moving the force of the load multiplied by the what the distance moved because the weight of the load was 500 and what distance is it carrying it through 20 meters it's just as if you now they say carry this from here to this place the work done you've done if the bucket you are carrying is 200 newton and you moved it in 10 meters the work done you've done is 200 times 20 that's the same thing with this pulley the, the load is 500 newton but the distance the pulley is rotating it is 20 meters you can see the pulley so it's the, this is the load is rotating it in 20 meters so the total load the total work done that this effort has done this pulley has done is what 500 times 20 and that gave us 10,000. Then don't forget, it's also working against friction. Because you know, remember the friction now? Friction is the force between two surfaces in contact. So as it's raising this thing, it's also overcoming friction. So the friction is overcoming is 800 joules. So the total work that that pulley is doing, it is carrying the load, yes, through a distance. And that was the work done multiplied by the distance. It is also overcoming friction. And that is 800 joules. So the total work done is 10,000 plus 800, which is 10,800. Then what is the efficiency efficiency is the work output that is the work the machine is doing divided by the work input that is everything that is input into the system which is both the one done by the machine and both the one is doing against the friction so that is work output which is what five fifty five hundred times twenty right divided by the work input and times hundred over one and the efficiency of this machine which is so high is ninety two point six percent so also when we've known our efficiency we can get our ma right ma is equals to let's go to our board we have our efficiency is 92.6 percent we have that our efficiency is 92.6 percent don't forget that efficiency is equals to ma over vr and don't forget i told you that the number of pulleys is a vr so e which is 92.6 is equals to m dot a divided by what how many pulleys do we have it was four pulleys i guess let's check so i will not make mistake we have how many pulleys do we have yes the pulley was four yes we have four so that is four then times what 100 over one so this is how to do it so 92.6 is equals to what m a times 100 
divided by 4. So 4 we multiply this, then MA times 100 is equal to 92.6 times 4. Then MA is equal to 92.6 times 4 divided by 100. You get your MA, although there are different ways, but you can also get it like that. So we have it that MA is equal to what? Load over effort, which is 500 over E. And we don't know our E, but we know our, v, our what? VR will be number of pulleys. So 500 divided by E times 1 over 4 times 100 is equal to what? 42.6. I'm sure you understand this. You know, MA is load over effort times the velocity ratio is what? Velocity ratio is actually 4. So that is 1 over 4. And that gives us what? Times 100 is going to give us what? 92.6. So the efficiency is what? The one, okay, the effort is what? 135 Newton. The effort is 135 Newton. Let me explain what we did there. You have that MA. Efficiency, right? Is equals to MA. Efficiency is equals to MA over VR times 100 over 1, right? What is your MA? Your MA was what is load over effort, right? Divided by what? The velocity ratio. Is that not so? So if I want to equate this, I can say load over effort times what? 1 over VR. Is that not so? And times 100 over 1. Because this is the formula. So now, if, we are, if we, that's our efficiency, right? And we know what our efficiency is. This is going to give us almost the same thing. Our efficiency was, I think, 92.6. So what is your load? Your load was 500, right? Over, what is your effort? You don't know it? Then times 4. This also multiplied by 100. Multiplied by 100. So this is going to be equal to is equals to 92.6 times 4 times E. So E will be equals to divided by 92.6 times 4. Divided by 92.6 times 4. Let's go to our calculator to do that. So we have it. Our answer is 134.98 and it can also be equals to 135 newton 135 newton we can also say it is 135 newton 135 newton so we got it from that and that's how we got our 135 newton so inclined plane the inclined plane is used to raise heavy loads such as drums of oil up a sloping plank to a high floor so this is the inclined plane it's just used to raise an heavy load it's just like the one used to raise load into a big car into a Maybe you are packing sand or something, a trailer. This is a kind of um, kind of simple machine that is used to take load into a big thing, a, a trailer or thereabouts. So incline plane, the incline plane is used to raise heavy loads such as drums of oil up a sloping plank to a high to high floors of lorries. Exactly. So the sloping plank is an example of an inclined plane. Velocity ratio of an inclined plane, since this is an inclination, so VR is equal to 1 over sine theta. VI is equal to 1 over sine theta. If friction is absent, mechanical advantage and velocity ratio are equal. They are equal. They are equal. So example here, the floor of a lorry is 2.0 meter. Just always try to visualize it. I, a plank 5 meter long is used as an inclined plane. That's the height. Is used as an inclined plane to raise some load up the lorry. If the efficiency of this machine is 50%, what is the minimum effort required to raise 200 newton load up the plane? Don't forget your VR. Your velocity ratio is what? 1 over sine theta. And it's also equal to distance moved by effort divided by what? Distance moved by load, right? Distance moved by effort divided by distance moved by load. So all of these things are so simple. Efficiency is MA over VR times R. So if I want to get my MA, that's what I'm saying, efficiency, times VR divided by 100. What is your MA itself? Your MA is load over effort. So load over effort is equal to efficiency times the velocity ratio divided by 100, right? So efficiency then, effort, which is what we are looking for, is equal to what, if we cross multiply here, 100 multiplied by the load divided by efficiency times VR. So your effort is 100 times 200 times 50 times 2.5, which is equal to 160 Newton. Let's go to our board to explain that.
you recall from all what we've been saying, we said MA, right? And sorry, E is equals to MA over VR times 100 over 1. That is what we've been saying, right? So, we want to check the question now. Were we giving the efficiency? Were we giving, um, we are, because the question we were asked to look for is the effort. We we're asked to look for the what? The minimum load. What is the minimum effort required? So, we're looking for our effort. So, what were we giving? We were giving our what? The floor of a lorry is 20 meter high. The floor of our lorry is 20 meter high. So, distance moved by effort divided by distance moved by load. What's the distance moved by the effort? The distance moved by effort is a plank five meter long is used as an inclined plane so distance moved by effort divided by the distance moved by the load so the floor of the lorry is 20 meters so these are the distances so 5 divided by 2 will give us our velocity ratio so we have that our velocity ratio already our velocity ratio is what 5 divided by 2 right so we can put that here whatever the value is and where we what else were we giving in our question we already, we've already derived our velocity ratio what else were we giving okay we're giving the efficiency of the machine the efficiency of the machine is 15. so the efficiency of the machine so let's put that into the equation so we are going to have it as 50 right is it because we don't know our ma so we can still put our ma we know our vr as 2.5 then times what? 100 over 1. Can we get our MA from here? Yes, of course we can. So 50 times 2.5 is equal to what? 100 times MA. So our MA will be equal to what? 50 times 2.5. Divided by 100, right? Divided by 100. Just as if I'm now saying 2.5 divided by 2. 50 times 2.5 is equal to this divided by 100. 50 times 2.5 then divided by 100. The mechanical advantage is 1.25. So, but we were asked to look for what the efforts. We're asked to look for the effort. So what is the effort? The effort is what? Load. Were we given our load? If the load, okay. The floor of a lorry 2.0 meter high, a plank 5 meter long is used as an inclined plane to raise the load. If the efficiency, okay, this is our load. Our load is 200. Let's go back to our. So our MA which is 1.25 is equal to load. Okay, let's write it. MA is equal to load over effort, right? So what is going to be our load? Our load is then equal to, sorry, our effort is equal to MA times what? Sorry, we're looking for our effort. Oh, sorry, let's, let's do it again. The board is rough. We have that MA is equals to load right over effort and now we're looking for our effort so our effort will be equals to load over ma and we have our ma to our load to be 200 our ma to be 1.25 so let's divide that so we have our effort to be equals to 160 newton and that is it. Our effort to be equals to 160 Newton. So you can see that the efficiency of the machine is not okay. That's why the efficiency of the machine is what? 50%. Because look at the effort you are one is still applying to a 200 Newton load. To a 200 Newton load. The screw. Velocity. So for the screw, the velocity of the velocity ratio of a screw is equal to 2 pi r over p where r is the radius and p is the pitch velocity you know the screw the screw is round so that's why we're having it as 2 pi r divided by p which is the pitch then for the wheel and axle velocity ratio of the wheel and axle is given by the ratio of the radius of the wheel to the to, to the radius of the axle radius of the wheel to the radius of the axle that's for the what the wheel and axle so vr is equal to r the bigger r the, the radius of the bigger wheel 
divided by the axle of the radius of the smaller wheel. So the wedge, the wedge is a combination of two inclined planes. It is used to separate objects held together by great force. MA of a wedge is the ratio of the slant height to the thickness of the wedge. The greater the angle of the wedge, the smaller the mechanical advantage. All these things are so important. So we have gear and wheels. In this machine, this principle of wheel and axle is applied to the two wheels. The principle of wheel and axle, just the same way we did here, yes, is applied. The driving force the driving force and the driving wheels look at it from here so slower our rotation more force tits then faster rotation less force so in this for the principle of the wheel and axle is applied to the two wheels the driven and the driving wheels the driven and the, this one you put it here and it's really the one to drive this one so the driven and the driving wheels are connected by a belt and rotating a separate shaft velocity ratio is equivalent to the ratio of the number of wheels on the driven this one which is a bigger wheel to so the number of teeth of the smaller or the driven Wheel. So number of teeth on the driving wheel divided by number of teeth of driving wheel. This is one that is driving this bigger one. And that is all about simple machines today. I hope you enjoyed the class. Thank you.